the world can be a cold and harsh place for the living, and as these paranormal explorers came to find, the same can be said for the afterlife. 5. There's a YouTube channel called The Ghosts of Mississippi that goes to great lengths to debunk supposedly paranormal hotspots. You may remember an incredible video of theirs that I analyzed at the Wolf Manor in Clovis, California, in which a cross pushes itself through the floor. Anyway, the point is these paranormal investigators aren't afraid to travel across the nation for a good investigation, and that's the kind of dedication that makes their channel the real deal. With that said, there's another series of haunting videos of theirs that I want to focus on, ones that center around a haunted church that's in their home state, a place they've investigated often. On December 19, 2019, they enter the church and begin addressing any spirits nearby. They apologize for the condition of the church and show genuine sympathy. Then, after establishing a certain level of trust, they make a small request of anything listening. Of course, he could have just dragged his own foot across the floor to make the sound, so this alone isn't conclusive evidence of a ghost. But when they get out the spirit box and start asking questions, they get two clear answers. Here's the first. And when he pretends to not understand, there's a second nope that sounds like it's coming not from the spirit box but from a row of pews further back. Even if this spirit box is little more than random responses from radio airwaves, the odds of hearing nope twice and in perfect timing with a question are slim to none in my opinion. Orbs begin to dance all around and then it gives a name, which I can barely hear, so I'm not so sure about this one. This follow-up cry for help, however, is about as clear as can be and I think it's creepy how it waits an appropriate amount of time to reply. I also don't think the orbs dancing all around are a coincidence. Then there's the strange shadow figure in the stall scene at around 9 minutes. Is this Kevin the spirit or is this the thing that Kevin was asking for help against? Whatever it is, when he passes by the same Mary 8 minutes later, the corner is completely empty, and whatever was there is now gone. Just a couple weeks later on January 5th 2020, they returned to the church for a closer look. This time, as one of them kneels down to look at the mirror, this creepy image of an evil entity forms before their very eyes. On the right side of the mirror is what they describe as a demonic image peeking in. You can see its hand raised and, if you pause on three seconds, there's also two eyes and a small open mouth. When he stands up, the figure disappears and does not return. Of course, this could simply be a dirty mirror, but according to the investigator kneeling down, he felt something grab his hat, and when they shine their light on the mirror to try and recreate it, they can never make the figure return. Roaming cold spots begin to pass over them and they decide to leave before anything else happens. But on the way out I hear a hiss at 1 minute and 11 seconds. And as they reach the final room, they hear a warning sound from deeper within that I have no explanation for other than the paranormal. This sounds like no animal I have ever heard and I can practically hear the hate in its guttural growl. They search for the source of the growl for just a moment longer and then decide to get out of there fast. With so many sounds and sightings in such a short period of time, I have little doubt that something horrifying lurks within these halls. Its very existence is a defilement of this location, but perhaps that's exactly why this demonic force has chosen to make this place its new home, and I doubt it'll be leaving any time soon. 4. St. E. Richards and Jason Griffiths make up the Uwe Brothers, a fearless ghost hunting duo from the English Midlands. What makes them different from most, aside from their bravery, is that they are more skeptical and often set out to debunk famous haunted locations rather than promote them. With that said, they may have met their match at Shepton Mallet Prison. Built in 1610, Shepton Mallet Prison is the oldest prison in the country and also was the longest running until its closure in 2013. 
four centuries of brutal treatment have since created hostile spirits who were, for the most part, already not good people to begin with. So much horror has happened here that a strange feeling of negative energy is said to have washed over the very walls themselves, and it isn't long before the Uy brothers, despite their usual level-headedness, find themselves looking over their shoulder and questioning every sound. Sure, any building that's centuries old is bound to make some really creepy noises, and some of what they record just sound like the foundation settling and stuff like that, but other encounters, like what happens here only two minutes into their investigation, seems to be in response to a very specific question. I agree with them that it's coming from somewhere above but let me know if you do too. Whatever's following them, it seems to prefer to have a height advantage at all times. But check this part out at 8 minutes and 25 seconds, Jason actually looks up a split second before he hears the noise. So did they plan this and he messed up, or did he sense it moments prior? Confident they've found a particularly haunted prison wing to explore. The U brothers walk past each cell, encouraging anything inside to come forth. As they gently coax a spirit into revealing itself, Sweet is too busy looking straight ahead and misses this light anomaly appear against the wall right next to him. I fully admit it could be their camera equipment, but it never happens again a single time, and get this, the light appears at the exact moment Jason wanted to know if the spirit remembers what life was like at Shepton Mallet prison. Neither of them see this though and so, unaware that it's already worked, Jason continues to talk to the spirit about how the prison guards were able to go home while they had to stay here, and out comes the loudest bang of all. But that's not all they hear. They get out the electromagnetic meter to try and measure rare currents for paranormal activity. Nothing happens at first but then it beeps loudly and turns green for a long time. They can't get the meter to do it again and are trying to figure out if this was a glitch when they are interrupted by something scary mid-sentence. I'll enhance the audio to make it easier to hear. It's a small muffled voice from far away, so tiny and distant that it shouldn't have even registered on camera, not with the heavy door closed behind them, and yet it reaches their ears with alarming clarity. They agree it's a woman, but still. They are unable to pinpoint its exact location and when they go outside, the prison is empty as ever. According to legend, this could be the voice of one of the oldest prisoners, a woman known only as the woman in white. She is said to have taken the life of her fiancé and passed away in 1680 from regret. Now she wanders the A and B wings moaning her sorrows. As they are searching for her. The electromagnetic reader they left behind goes crazy once again, indicating that while they may have left the room, perhaps she had not, and the reason why they were able to hear her so clearly was because her ghostly presence had been standing not in another room, but behind them all along. 3. Connabidl and India Hopwood are a ghost hunting team who travels to different haunted locations in search of paranormal encounters which coincidentally is the name of their channel on YouTube. Born in Indiana, Connor released a full-length paranormal documentary in 2012 and has never stopped investigating. His partner, India, moved to South Carolina from England, and has been visiting haunted locations since she was 10, and began heading investigations as a teenager. They have nearly two decades of combined experience dealing with the afterlife between them and a lot of interesting evidence to share. This time they find themselves in Wytherville, Virginia to explore the infamous Octagon Mansion. Built in 1870, the Octagon Mansion, or the Round House as some call it, has a relatively unexplained haunted history. Many families lived here over its hundred plus year history and it was also a few different businesses for a while, none of which lasted for some reason. The town itself once experienced an outbreak that took over 100 lives, and this may have tainted Wytheville with many restless spirits. With that said, it should come as no surprise that a little host girl is said to be on the second floor, especially considering the outbreak targeted kids. As Connor is exploring the first floor, 
His camera goes out of focus a second before he senses something nearby. There's nothing to make it go out of focus and yet the background changes as if someone is standing right in front of him. And it stays blurry like this for 11 full seconds before snapping back into focus for no reason at all. And this noise happens a few seconds after coming into focus, almost like an invisible left the shot and went into a different room. This soft knocking is repeated again when he leaves a doll out for the girl to play with. And pay attention to the exact location of the doll because that's going to matter in just a second. But for now, it sounds like the girl might be coming downstairs to give the toy a closer look. So the doll is positioned in front of the furthest right window here at 2 minutes and 27 seconds. But at 4 minutes and 45 seconds, and it's now by the far left window with its arms raised to its mouth like it's afraid. Now Connor says he isn't sure if the doll moved or if this was just the camera angle. I think it definitely moved but the fact that he doesn't rush to take credit makes me respect his work that much more. On a different night, Connor and India think they record a spirit named Nina. Does this sound like a person or electronic interference? I respect that India is able to keep composure. My reaction was more like Connor's. She must have really seen a lot as a ghost hunter for this not to bother her. Anyway, this sounds like a scream of pure agony in my opinion. There's not any hatred in the voice, just pain. Perhaps a final scream from the girl upstairs. And if you didn't think the last sound was human, this one definitely is a woman's cry. India is able to translate quite easily. I believe it really does say hey here like she says. And the reason I believe it is because the ghost says hey again is for physical sightings, this is the best piece of evidence Connor has to offer. This 2012 video, taken in Bourbon, Indiana, in the attic of an old pizza place that used to be an apartment building, highlights a strange anomaly hovering against the wall. It doesn't look like the beam of a flashlight because, aside from not being round, there's no ray of light connecting it to a source. And when the white outline moves off the wall, it does not change size or shape like a flashlight would, instead staying completely the same as it traverses the darkness. Two. Over a year ago I briefly touched on the saga of Joseph Chanselm, a YouTuber who for years was haunted by a spirit from 2011 to 2014. But I didn't get to cover his whole story. Three more videos in particular are worth getting into. But first, I did some more research and discovered a blog with years worth of updates. Joseph first noticed an apparition within weeks of letting his girlfriend move into his apartment, so I suspect she may have brought something that had attached itself to her. Soon each of them felt constantly watched, especially in the shower of all places, and it got to the point where they both thought they were getting pranked by the other. But one day, as Joseph was taking a shower, he heard his girlfriend come into the bathroom. The topic was already on his mind so he explained to her that he thought the apartment was haunted, but then the figure on the other side, the one who he thought was his girlfriend, disappeared mid-explanation. From that point on, Joseph began setting up his sole camera in different places to document the spirit, and that's when things ramped up to the next level. On April 16, 2012, Joseph announces out loud to whatever's listening that he's turning in for the night. Orb activity begins at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, carries on for about 6 seconds and then abruptly stops. The kitchen is eerily quiet for over 40 seconds and then the stovetop burner turns on to the highest setting. This happens out of nowhere at the 3 minutes and 17 seconds mark. But at 3 minutes and 14 seconds, an orb shows up in front of the oven just three seconds before it turns on. Could this be the ghost in question caught on camera? 
Joseph was asleep so this event could have burned the whole place down if anything was still on the burner, which is maybe what this ghost was trying to do all along. A full seven months later, on November 28th of that same year, Joseph puts the camera up on a high ledge to show as much of his living room as possible, floor to ceiling. He again announces that he's going to bed and turns out the lights. It's 11.46 pm. Everything looks normal for roughly two minutes until a shadowy movement materializes over by the entertainment center. It's hard to notice even when circled but when you do see it, it looks way out of place. I don't think it's camera pixelation because none of the other darker areas of the room are moving like this. And at approximately two minutes a large lonesome orb floats upwards from that part of the room and disappears. Exactly 10 seconds later, at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, this speaker falls over and lands not too far from where the orb originated from. Obviously no one is around to knock it over, so if this is fake, how was it done? On October 1, 2013, Joseph made his final YouTube video letting everyone know he has moved to a new apartment. He thinks that changing his location has stopped the spirit, but considering it might have attached itself to his girlfriend when she first moved in, I'm not so sure it worked. This part at 4 minutes and 30 seconds further proves my point. It could be his camera making a squeaking noise while being adjusted, but it sounds a lot like the laughter of a small child. And when you compare it to his normal laugh, it's definitely not the same voice. And that's pretty much the last anyone's ever heard from him. The last update comes from his blog on July 25th, 2014, promising more videos that sadly never came. I don't know what happened to him, no one does, but suddenly dropping off at the height of your fame is not reassuring to say the least, and makes me wonder if something terrible happened. I've got a challenge for you, since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next 5 seconds, because I upload 4 new scary videos every week. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, 1. Vadim Vadimik is a Russian YouTuber who often explores the radioactive remains of Chernobyl, an abandoned power plant that went into meltdown during the 1980s. On this journey he and his group find an abandoned daycare center that seems quite haunted. One of the first things they find are two dolls. One is headless and the other has poked in eyes shaded black all around, as if someone was pressing down aggressively hard as they scribbled. It's not a welcoming sign but could just be the work of some edgy teens or maybe even someone in their own group, and so they press on. Across from the dolls is this picture of a Russian team all huddled around a strange object in the center. I don't know what this is in the middle so somebody help me out because it might be a clue. I assume this was a picture of the kids who used to come here before the meltdown. Who knows how many, if any, actually made it to adulthood due to the radioactive exposure. Immediately behind the photo is a creepy old picture of a Russian woman in full uniform crying. I don't understand the significance of this picture but I feel like they are saying something important here, so translate this part from Russian to English if you can. After a while, it becomes apparent that they are being watched. These white eyes first appear on the other side of a window at 2 minutes and 15 seconds. I thought it was just his light until I realized the light is hitting his chest and shouldn't be visible behind him at all. And here at 3 minutes and 52 seconds the eyes appear again in a doorway, much closer. It's just for a split second but I mean, whose flashlight looks like that? Nobody's that I know. Those look like eyes for sure, glowing ones at that. They come across a portion of building they've explored before, but this time the door is partially open, so they cautiously step inside. The first thing I noticed were these floating eyes at 7 minutes and 56 seconds. They look exactly the same size and shape as the ones before. But what they saw was the top of someone's head, someone incredibly tall and standing totally still. 
standing motionless is a figure with a blacked out face and long white garbs. They run away and soon encounter it again. Its white clothes somewhat resembled the doll clothes we saw earlier. Could that have been a warning? When it gets close to them, it seems shorter than before but impossibly broad-shouldered and powerful looking. I don't know why they let it get this close but I guess they frozen in place from fear and tired from running. I was hoping this was just a mannequin or something but when it does this I know it's far from a prop. The group retreats back inside and, now cornered, eventually resorts to smashing through a window and takes a risk climbing through broken glass just to get away from whatever they just saw, so I think it's real.